Ah, the bomb cyclone. You'll hear it a bunch time to time throughout the course of a year when we're talking about a really strong storm. It's not just a buzzword that you hear a lot in the headlines. It's kind of like polar vortex, how a few times a year you might hear, oh, the polar vortex is coming. That is also a real thing. We are going to talk about that in another episode of WeatherWise down the line, likely sometime in winter where that is most prevalent. But we are going to talk about the bomb cyclone or bombogenesis today. Mentioned that it is a real meteorological thing dealing with a very strong area of low pressure. It has a simple definition, a 24 millibar drop in pressure in 24 hours. Millibars are a unit of pressure. And when it drops that quickly, that means we have a strengthening system. Think of like uh, rapid intensification when we're talking about tropical storms and hurricanes. That's a set definition. So is this. So if it matches or equals that 24 millibar drop in pressure in 24 hours, we officially have witnessed a storm bombing out or becoming a meteorological bomb or achieving bomb cyclone status or undergoing bombogenesis. So there's a lot of those terms you may hear. They're not made up. It's an actual meteorological thing. So I wanted to pass that along since oftentimes, especially as we get into the fall and through the winter, bombogenesis becomes a lot more likely because of the mechanism. Unlike tropical storms and hurricanes, these systems, these storms get their strength from large differences in temperature and pressure in the atmosphere. So a different mechanism still causing can cause a lot of damage. So this example here on the West Coast, again, those tightly packed isobars, those lines of equal pressure that you see in white there, the tighter the lines there, the close, more closely grouped they are together, the stronger the storm. So when you're looking at a surface weather chart like that and you notice lines very, very close together, like this example here off the southwest, southwest coast of Canada, northwest corner of the United States, that means we have a very, very strong storm and likely at some point underwent bombogenesis to get there, a rapidly deepening storm area of low pressure. Remember also, we talk about um, cyclones. That is the deal here. Bomb cyclone. A cyclone is a storm anywhere around the world. So in the tropics, we know them as tropical cyclones. Those are our tropical depressions, tropical storms, and hurricanes. Completely different mechanism. We're going to break that down a little bit later. Bunch of different types of these things, or at least different locations. So they're not always on the west coast of the United States. That's just one example. We see these a lot with the blizzards through the plains and the upper Midwest. We also see them a lot on the east coast of the United States, and we sometimes deal with them as well, at least the trailing end, the cold front side of these nor'easters that really flare up as they ride up the east coast of the United States. So this is really one of the more common areas that we look for bombogenesis to take place because of the extreme differences in temp temperature and pressure here. So this example of, of the nor'easter, we get that area of low pressure developing in the deep south, oftentimes working through the Florida panhandle on the southern side of the jet stream that you see there. Notice the difference in color there. The blue represents a lot of times Arctic cold, and the orange represents the warm tropical air mass that we still sometimes have the influence of even deep into winter. If the winds are out of the southeast, we bring up all that moist, I know everybody hates that word, that very tropical air mass from the Caribbean or extreme southwest Atlantic up here. And it's that difference in temperature that fuels it. We also have another powder keg here, though, when you're talking about the Gulf Stream, even in the winter. We have that very narrow ribbon of water that hangs out over uh, off the coast of Florida, rides up and exits kind of off the Carolina coast. You see it there highlighted in deep, dark orange. When you get a developing system to find that, that increases your temperature gradient, as we call it. The differences in temperature and pressure, and those things can explode. So oftentimes in the winter, these will unload feet of snow along the I-95 corridor or interior New England and can bring the deep south, including Florida, severe weather. So that's always something that we have to watch out for when we get these big dips in the jet stream and an area of low pressure developing on the southern flange there of uh, that dip in the jet stream. All right, so I mentioned before that we have several different several different types of storms. We have our extra tropical storms or our mid-latitude cyclones, what these things are that these bomb cyclones, if they're strong enough anyway, and meet that criteria that we just talked about. Nor'easters are those. And then, of course, we have 
tropical cyclones. We are going to talk about the difference, the mechanisms that fuel both of those things coming up.